Wah, wah, wah. Shoulda bought an N54, shoulda bought a 335, wah, wah, wah. Perchance, perchance. <clears throat> Maybe I should have bought a 335. Maybe. There we go, we're hooked up. But uh, I think I'd rather I have a 328 with a laptop. Seven. Right full and flat. There we go. Car's on, plugged in. We're on, should be loading. Battery tender, on. And here we go, it takes about 30 minutes. So why would I get this N52 over an N54? Why would I get a 328 or a 330 over a 335? Or why would you ever get a base model when there are better options? Why would an enthusiast go through the hassle of modifying a slow car to be fast and expensive as the performance model? I probably could have had an M3 at this point, an E92 M3 or an E90 M3. But if I could go back and do it again, I think I would pick this car again and do the same thing. <sighs> All right, car finished tuning. So we'll go back. Hell yeah. Anyways, some examples of base model cars like a Lancer over an Evo, V6 muscle cars, NA Subarus, Civic Sport, and people do all that instead of uh, just buying the nicer model like the SI or the STI or at least a WRX or the 335. And at this point, I'm pretty much there. Like car has a uh, newer five series wheels, has 335 brakes, it has a 335 manual transmission and rear diff. It has the 308 diff in it right now. Um, and the axles are the same. And across all the platforms, this thing is um, not far off from M3. Suspension wise, you can swap M3 suspension all the way across. But in this case, a lot of people are like, oh, just sell the N52 and get a 335. It's a lot better. The engine's way stronger and may as well if you want a lot of power that's what the bolt-on boys say so in this video i'll cover the differences between the n54 and n52 and why it could be a better option for you to get an n52 so to start off let's cover the specs what makes people say the n54 is so much better than the n52 and i think that would mainly be strength so for the n54 a lot of the big differences that you'll see d between the engine building is the N54 was built for strength and the N52 is built for lightweight and uh, durability. So I'll put all the specs on the screen here. To start off, the N54 with all the accessories uh, weighs 429 pounds while the N52 weighs 412 pounds. So not a giant difference and after you turbo your N52 it's probably right up there along with it. But the N50, or these cars are relatively easy to gut, and from the factory, the 
E90 328s over the 335s are a couple hundred pounds lighter. And the differences between the engine blocks is the N54 is all alloy with 3.15 millimeter sleeves. N52 is magnesium outer, making it more lightweight. The block itself is much more lightweight than the N54 and it has 0.5 millimeter sleeves so not really real sleeves i hear a bike coming the n54 has a forged crank with different uh, sizings and the n52 has a cast crank that is also lighter weight the n54 has 10 millimeter head bolts and the N52 has 9mm head bolts, although could be easily sized up. The N54 has forged rods that weigh 616.06 grams. And the N52 has forged rods, 8mm rod bolts, and they weigh 543.62 grams. So a lot lighter weight in movement and pistons lighter weight pistons can rev faster and rev higher so obviously two completely different purposely built engines and then the cars are n54 is 10.2 to 1 compression n52 is 10.7 to 1 compression so a little bit higher compression and the n52 can definitely take more compression and i think would benefit a lot from it as an na motor from higher compression and then the pistons themselves, the N54 piston is 469.7 grams, and the N52 piston is 402.6 grams. And not to mention the difference in heads between the N52 and 54. A lot of people know the difference between heads and know that the N52 flows way better. So this engine was obviously made to be NA and Part of me kind of regrets not going or keeping it NA and making as much NA power and keeping it a track car in that way, but also I do enjoy um, kind of helping pioneer and, and getting through turboing the car, and it has been the goal of mine since first purchasing the car, although I've grown up a little bit. to tuning but anyways like I was saying the N52 is built for lightweight um, all the internal components are lighter as well and it's not only for overall weight it's for rotating assembly weight the N52 is designed and able to rev higher than the N54 ever would easily and still make good power NA the head flows like I, I, I don't know what the CFM rating is but it's significantly better the valves are are also better when you do mills on this engine too it definitely opens it up so and another important thing to know is that the N52 is the last NA inline 6 from BMW and all of its capabilities it should be able to rev comfortably to around 75 to 7700 rpm if you're wanting to push it but that's plenty people might be more interested in these cars is because they're known for their reliability and their lack of cooling issues. BMW has already proved their NA inline sixes with the uh, S54 and the E46 M3. Uh, that one has like 11 and a half rate to one ratio compression and makes, I'm pretty sure over 300 horsepower, 320. So it's definitely possible if you built an N52 to the same sort of specs as a M3 engine with uh, all lightweight stuff up the compression and the I believe the N53 pistons make more compression and maybe fit directly I think the bore is the same between the 52 and 53 so you can up your compression to 12 to 1 and this do mills rev it out to you know as high as you can 75 to 77 that paired with 22 RPD trumpet intake manifold. I don't know if it's considered ITBs because it's not individual 
throttle bodies is just going off of valve tronics um with all that paired together i could see this engine making na a good 300 horsepower which would be awesome and that put in a lighter weight car like a gutted car paired with a manual transmission would pretty much be a deadly combo my dream n52 build would be all of that like a high compression 12 to 1 just engine refreshed and i would pair that with this transmission the gs6 53 bz 335 six speed transmission so this same drivetrain that's in this car if i put that in an e30 that weighed 2500 pounds that would be a pretty good track car and in a straight line wouldn't do too bad either in the end building an n54 is still a good option but it doesn't mean building n52 is a bad option or is pointless or that you should sell it um it's kind of one or the other either if you want to be a straight line roll racing bolt-on boy wastegate rattle coolant leak n54 guy then by all means go ahead or you can um get an n52 and learn how to actually build a car and learn how to actually drive and how to actually set up the suspension and not to mention you're going to be paying uh economy family sedan insurance prices which is also a lot better anyways guys we're still tuning the car still trying to see what these engines can really do i think uh we're pretty close to having several different setups to that work i hope in the future that i'll be able to build another nan52 uh, once I get some more space and some more time on my hands But uh, currently the car just now made about 320 torque I don't know what the horsepower number is, but it made 320 torque at about 4,000 rpm According to my last log. So I'll keep you guys updated as much as I can um, Everything's still running good. Uh, no huge leaks the drain pan where I tapped for the oil return line It seeps and kind of sweats oil a little bit other than that there's no real issues. I don't think I have any boost leaks or could possibly have a wastegate issue since I've only seen around seven, six to seven PSI on the gauges. So, but anyways, thank you guys for sticking around. Most of you guys are not subscribed, so please consider it. And I would greatly appreciate that if you'd like more updates on what the N52 can do and my journey with it. Mm-hmm.